It needs to be said one more time. What? Naughty pussy. <laughs> did you finish it? Yeah. Did you enjoy it at all? I did. Okay, good. Yeah. Just making sure. Juice! Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks to Patreon for to come subscribe to the like button. Uh, oh, fish. <laughs> you know why I enjoyed oh, it? Oh, fish, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it because I got a really important clarification that either I'd never heard or just finally registered <clears throat> from Indrani. Talking about Om Shanti Om. Om Shanti Om. So I'm watching it, and I asked her a question. I said, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask. They, they knew when they were making it what they were doing, right? In the same way, when you're watching Young Frankenstein, they know what they're doing. Yeah. He, they knew what they were doing was ridiculous. Oh, they weren't trying. They, 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 they're well aware. Oh, yeah, it was obvious. Yes. And she said, oh, of course. I said, okay, <clears throat> that helps me receive it much better. So I really, I really enjoyed. I could put aside all of the stuff that strained credulity beyond wildest imagination yeah, that wasn't... and just enjoy it for what it yeah, is. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun with Om Shanti Om. Om Shanti Om. Yeah. Anyways, but speaking of Rashad Rukhan, we're at part three of Beneath series, Beneath the Surface series. Awesome. Um, so uh, if you haven't seen our first two parts, if you're on YouTube, uh, you can check those out. Those are already out if this one's out right now. Um, and they've been Is this great. the final one? No, there's another one. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you just say that? <laughs> there's four. There's okay. four total. Got it. Uh, here we go. So before we broke off for you to do the shot, uh, you were telling me about the superstar experience and how you can't really tell anyone what it's like, right? Because but, I also don't know. No, you what know, it's like. your No, life. you know. You can't. You can't. Uh, uh, it, it's not very explainable, to be honest. Sure. I, mean, I, can, I can be modest and say it's a regular life, it's very normal, but obviously it's not. It's normal. not. <laughs> Is it always enjoyable though? Or does it ever get exhausting? No, there's no other place I'd rather be. Uh, I'm, I'm very clear about this. Um, I mean, I don't think about it. I don't get depressed. I don't uh, get uh, nightmares. With what if I wasn't a star anymore? Never have. Because, like, we decided 21 years ago. I believe <laughs> that this is going on. And for 25 years, if it goes on, then what is there to check your prostate? Uh, but no, I, I love being loved. I love being a big star. I love being in the public eye. I love being. I love being controversial. I love being. I love being terrified. You know, um, a couple of years ago, um, I was listening to Javed Sawad, the Jaipur Lit Fest, and he was talking about lyrics. And he he said this. He said, "Maaf karna, lekin tezib thodi kam ho gayi hai hamare gaano mein." And I felt like it's not just gaana. It's 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 everything. You know, in life, tezib thodi kam ho gayi. I mean, you you just look at sort of the public discourse, the kind of slanging matches on social media. You know, when two films release, it just gets ugly. I mean, why, why this lack of tezi? I'll tell you, we haven't lost respect for the other. You've just lost self-respect. It is very strange. You know, there were things I would not hear or say when you're talking about public slanging and the way people talk. How can a self-respecting person speak this? Yeah. It's not whether I respect you or not. That okay. I right. That's secondary. Oh, second yeah. Thing. Yeah. I don't respect myself. How do I? Get up in the morning after having spoken like this about someone in the in the night. I think we're just losing self-respect and dignity. I mean, you know, just because we say, uh, "You go, girl," say what? Go. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> You're making exclamation. Yeah, we are expressing ourselves with exclamations now, and uh, exclamations are actually shocking um, uh, alphabets or whatever they call. It. You know, it's like we put exclamations then. You become a, 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 a whole society, and I'm not pleased. I'm not grieving. It's just beautiful. Uh, uh, we just become a whole set of people who speak to each other in uh, exclamation. <laughs> and exclamation somehow are always rude. I think. You know? <gasps> what? <gasps> Tom? Woohoo! Say oh, 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 yo! That's so long. Ago. Om Shanti Om. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fish! Oh, fish, man! And I just feel we need to respect ourselves a little more. But do you think it's because bad behavior gets attention? 
and people now everybody wants to be in sort I think of people mistake honesty uh, bad behavior for honesty i'm saying it like it is <laughs> no it's not like it. you would have thought man. maybe it's not like this i read somewhere one of the gentlemen one of our colleagues working with us uh, somewhere started writing some really strange things about my colleagues but sir uh, got on to work with us we love him single we like some such strange stuff and mm -hmm. message bolta no no you know saying it like it is is not uh, being rude you you mistaken and it's sad yeah. because then i find you can tell you Yeah. Yeah, 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 it just I mean, goes I mean, on. Some regular guys, the normal person also starts. And I tell them, come on, let it be. It actually is honest to God. Whenever I've done it, I apologize. Whenever I've had an outburst, I'm really apologetic. I'm really apologetic to myself and to the world for giving, setting a bad example. And this is no justification. And this is no excuse. But all of that builds up sometimes as a public figure. And it comes out in that one little incident. Mm. And then, yeah, you are retarded and you're supposed to be mad and you're supposed to be pompous and you think you're a big star. Uh, this is no excuse. No excuse. I should not even do it then. You know, uh, you need to, uh, I guess, uh, take some, what is it? Some calming medicine or something. Like that. <laughs> I think I should be resting all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Meditate. Meditate. I should, I should, yeah. <laughs> Practice mindfulness. You yeah, know. I should. I should. I should really. I think very often that I should learn cooking, um, gardening. So I'm, I'm trying to learn Italian food. Tonight was for pasta. Let me see if I can. Really? I swear, I want to learn Italian food. I want to cook Italian. He did. I just sort of as a. Yeah, as I'm going to clarify on your program. It's not because of my political affiliation. <laughs> <laughs> I want to cook Italian. I think it's very sexy. It is. <laughs> you know, just, uh, Listen, any man. Italians are sexy. And I am, and yeah. I've got all the other. Not you. Correct. You know, <laughs> so I've got that too. So I, I need. I, I want to wear an apron. And, um, Watch uh, Stanley Tucci and, show. You know, put some wine, drink from it, and cook food. Yes, I know, absolutely. I, I, I know it's, it's very sexy, but I won't do it for my kids. Mm -hmm. The pizza like this. There's a lady here, lady. Great thing about Italian food is there's so, not I, I a lot of it is really food, simple to make. But I forgot now uh, when, I, when my shoulder was broken, so I took the time off and did. But I really want to do that and learn ten songs on a guitar, listen to every woman in the world, whoever she is, whatever age she is, whatever state of life she is. I want to know ten songs to sing and a guitar, open G, mm. Italian food cooking abilities. That's it. And uh, looks I have. I just. Full production, right? And I'm humble. He's been you know, consistent about that. You know, we talked about Ravan released, and uh, you talked about how it really made you happy when people talked about you being the first person to sort of play the bad guy in a heroic way in the and Bazinga. And you said then that um, it's been a long time since I heard that about myself that I started something, and and you know Ravan was a attempt to start something. Do you think? I mean, of course there was that film, but do you think otherwise? Did you take enough risks? Yeah, whenever the opportunity is presented itself, I've never designed something to take a risk. With. You know, if you offer me a role, or if you offer me a production that has not been done, like say Ram, or say now Arvind's dwarf, or say Fan, it was impossible to make when we took it to Hollywood also. So now let's do it. And the kind of stuff we spent on was hardly uh, recoverable, even even on paper. You know, uneducated Arvind especially. So it was difficult for him. But I would never do something just for the sake of highlighting the fact that look, I took a chance. Mm. That's not. Uh, you don't want to be applauded for that. At my stage, no. Mm. Uh, at my stage, I don't want to surprise you. <laughs> I don't want to shock you. Right? I don't want to be uh, shocked by myself. Like I did. I'm not. I'm not in a uh, hyper place anymore. I'm not in hyper mode anymore. Uh, mentally, yes. Uh, physically, yes. Uh, But it's not about proving something to anyone anymore. It doesn't take out, uh, take away the edge. It doesn't take away the competitive spirit. It doesn't take away the yearning to do something really new and fantastic, which I've never done before. And being able to prove it to my three-year-old son, when he turns 15, then why is your father so famous? Because he deserves to, not because. Of a film called Dilwale Dilwale and Dilwale, which he did 20 years ago, and he still runs in the theater. Yes. That won't work for him. Maybe 15 years later, 
I mean, these are the greatest things. Listen, I just went back to see it. It still works, man. Shocker. It still, I bought into it completely. Yeah. So, my logic is, if I want to innovate and if I want to do something new, I'll have to do it for that three-year-old, four-year-old. And I'm really, really, really full of uh, energy for that. When I started out, I told everyone, I want to do five great things. And when I say great, uh, greatness is time-bound. You know, things change years later, what you thought is great now, it's not great five years later. But still, I want to do uh, five great things. I, I think I've not only one. And really? I, yeah, I need to. I mean, you know, they're dated now. They're finished. They're no. I respectfully disagree, sir. <laughs> Work with Vishal Bardwash on your Akashi app. And at this stage, I'm really, really hungry for greatness. In a good way. I've not been conscious that I want it all. Still do your pathons. But also. I don't want it all. But I want to do stuff which I keep saying. I need to be at the end of my career, whenever that may be, honestly, uh, to be deserving of. Uh, Got what I have. It'd be, it's really, really, really sad if I'm for a moment. Do I deserve this? I should genuinely know myself. I deserve. Mm. And some things I don't want to have. To. Though I talked about politeness and courtesy, I don't want to say thank you to anyone. I don't want to owe it to anyone. And uh, I don't want to say. It's to you. It's your own hard work. It's my hard work. I worked for it. I went wrong and I tried it. I know it sounds too much I, but I'm being honest in saying it. And I don't want to say sorry to anyone. That I let them down. That I screwed up. These are two words I don't want to say at the end of my video. Sorry, I'm... Thank you. <laughs> no, no I, I, don't want, uh, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say sorry and I don't want to say thank you. I, I want to be humble and I want to be genuinely um, happy about what I've done. I want to be dissatisfied because that's one other thing I don't want. I don't want to be satisfied. That's really, really dissatisfied. To be satisfied. Uh -huh. I don't want to sit back. Sometimes, in the last six, seven years, I think my physicality has stopped me for a couple of years because of injuries. Uh, but I've overcome them. You saw me. It's like... I did. Yeah, pretty good. I show you my six-pack of underarms. <laughs> the fair underarms. Yeah, six-pack. I think I've my product. Oh, my God. I'm so cheap, I deserve to be <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm so cheap. I deserve to be a super. <laughs> He's one of the most interesting people I've ever had the pleasure to to get to know through his interviews. Yeah. He's such an interesting different animal, man. But I mean, he's obviously a, just interesting He's, he's a sarcastic person, which is great. Which as is well. great, yeah. Um, love sarcastic people, um, my people. Um, and seems extraordinarily genuine. Yeah, um, but also nobody outside of maybe two other people, Salman Khan, Amir Khan, a couple other Indian superstars, yeah. have ever gone through what he's gone through. No. So he has a very unique perspective that no one else has. Yeah, yeah. It's such such a unique perspective. Um, and I get what he's what he's saying there. He, he, he's it's it's weird to say I, I don't want to say thank you, blah blah blah, and stuff like that. No, and I don't think he's saying that I'm not thankful for a different. People. No, there's a difference between saying I don't want to say thank you versus being unthankful. It's it's the, it's the cultural differentiation between um, saying thank you. I learned you know we learned very quickly when we said thank you to stupid babies mm -hmm. or thank you to a friend. I remember my friend now through Indrani and her very close friend Orpo. As when I said thank you to him in person, he was like, no, 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 don't, that's, that's, you don't, that's, that's impersonal. You don't say thank you to a friend. Hmm. It's, a, it's a cultural thing to, yeah. if it's a friend, there's no need to thank me. You're my friend. I, I, I yeah. didn't do anything out of the ordinary for you. It's yeah. expected of me to treat you in a way that here it's very, here, try going to Canada. <laughs> The Canadians say sorry no, and thank you more than any other culture in the world. Part so of being polite here. Yeah, but I understand. I, know, I understand exactly what he's meaning, and I love. And I think this is something Andrani would love because she's been teaching me this. I love his sense of. It's okay to say I deserve something. Yeah. It's okay to reward yourself. It's okay to look at something you've done and go, you know what? I'm proud of me mm -hmm. for having done that. Yep. And that's that's un unfortunately that's not. Um, 
at least in my experience, that was not something that was ever really taught. It's like your parents tell you you should be proud, but they don't teach you to be proud of yourself necessarily because yeah. it can come across in our culture as you're arrogant. Yeah, you're arrogant. But it's not. It's, it's, I think it's a very healthy perspective. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a, a fine line, but there's, yeah. um, it's definitely, I think people are learning to be more accepting of being proud of stuff you should be proud of. Yeah, and, that, and to say, I deserve, yeah. fill in the blank. Yep. I deserve to be loved. I deserve that relationship. I deserve, I deserve that success. I deserve that income. Mm -hmm. uh, you, do. you do. You do. Yeah. Anyways. And yes, sir, you do deserve the things that you've accomplished. Yep. yep. Yes. Uh, fantastic interview again. We'll get to the fourth part here soon. Great. Uh, let us know other interviews we can react to down below. Just